what's up guys max van gelby here and today we are going to be talking about low end processing what i mean by that is kick and bass essentially uh you heard a snippet of me playing it here we just have a basic kick drum and a loop that i found uh, on some sample pack and uh, we are going to basically go over a couple of things. Uh, one of the most common questions we get is about the glue compressor uh, or compression in general. In this case, we have a kick and the bass bust together. You can disregard this here. All these things don't matter here. Uh, and uh, what we have is we have them together going to a group called Meat. I like to call it. The heavy stuff essentially and we have a ableton live uh glue compressor obviously there's a lot of different glue compressors out there for those of you guys that are not using ableton uh, there's literally called the glue compressor which you can find as well uh, but basically we're going to talk about a couple of things and then we have the uh obviously the spectrum analyzer which is going to help you guys a lot in terms of uh, seeing what's happening with the signal so before diving into the glue compressor uh i'm going to go over a couple of common mistakes that i see guys making so uh the first thing is on your kick drum here's our kick drum in ableton live uh, we have this amazing option where you can control the decay of the kick drum essentially like this. So people that, uh, a lot of producers, especially the ones that are using Ableton, uh, not Ableton, Logic, um, and uh, they sort of just uh, throw the kick uh, into the audio channel like that. We're just gonna find a random kick so let's take let's just take a random kick uh, so what ends up happening is you don't have too much control uh, in um, in this case because you can't really you can kind of control the audio I guess release this way this is why it's very important to use some sort of a sampler. In my case, I'm using an impulse from Ableton where you could just drag and drop the kick drum here and you can, you know, draw it in on the MIDI keyboard. That way you have a lot more control and um, basically control the kick against uh, the, the bass. So in this case, for example, let's play this together and I'll just put the decay, which is the release of the kick really high. I mean, you can hear what a mess it's uh, starting to create when this is completely open. So it's good to have this uh, in your arsenal where you can control the decay and make uh, adjustments depending on how big your bass lines are. And if your bass lines are fairly big, you might want to pull this back. So the next thing is obviously basic things like side chaining. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know about the side chaining. You need to have it, slap it on there. This is not doing anything, so you can disregard this. And the other thing is low cutting. You got to low cut your bass lines sometimes according to the kick. So you got to really listen and listen to what's happening. I like to dip my bass lines somewhere around 40k, just kind of shave. Once we clean up the bass line with basic EQing and side chaining, we can dive into our glue compression essentially here. So let me solo this for you guys without the glue compressor on. As you can see, the glue compressor really adds a lot of bounce to our bass line and the kick drum playing together. 
And this is the reason why sometimes you hear tracks that sound really bouncy and sometimes tracks sound really flat. So if you want to create a little bounce with your low end, the glue compressor is a great tool to use. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that you need to understand. So the attack essentially what it does, it mainly focuses on the signal flow, how much signal flow you are allowing to basically duck underneath compression and basically creating a signal that doesn't get squashed. So the reason why this is important for signals like the kick drum is because you obviously want to have the transient of the kick drum just ducking through a bit. So in this case, I have a bit of attack set on one, so it's not on zero. If it was set on zero, you would basically be squashing the complete attack of the kick essentially. Now the release is a really probably the the release and the threshold are the two most important things in this case. So let me play you what it's doing. So as you can see that the lower the release ratio is, the more bounce is being created. So essentially the release time is very fast. So the faster the release time, the more kind of up and down feel you're getting. So you obviously want to adjust that depending on how you want it. Sometimes you can put it on auto, there's an auto setting, or somewhere in the middle in my case here. Now the ratio works like this. Uh, the lower the ratio is, the more compression that is happening in this case like this. And the higher the ratio is, less compression is happening. So we usually have it somewhere in the middle. Now the threshold is probably the, mo the most important knob here. It's basically how much signal are you going to be pushing uh, basically to be compressed. So the lower this number is, the more squashed the signal is, just like so. My rule of thumb normally, don't try to go over the negative 5 threshold. And then the makeup gain is basically, since you are getting some volume, um, reduction here you want to control that with the makeup gain and pull it up accordingly however you want it normally you don't want the makeup gain higher than that number here which is basically why these numbers are very close now my favorite free plugin here is of course span it's a free spectrum analyzer It's good for you guys to start learning the signal flow and visually seeing where the kick is sitting, where the bass is sitting. And as you can see in my case, they are not clashing on the peaks. It's a nice, even, low end curve. So be sure to check out this amazing plugin. I hope you could still download it. It is free. I'm not sure how it works with the newer systems, but there's a ton of other spectrum analyzers out there. And also, if you guys want to learn more, be sure to join the No Face Academy. We have amazing instructors. We have a ton of videos, and we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions, webinar sessions with our students. And you can join for free uh, today by going to nofacerecords.com. You're a mystery. Last night you were next to me Now I'm holding on to nothing in the dark And I believe it when we come back to my love again Then we go from back together to apart